Well, welcome everyone to another edition of Taking Stock Live. As we turn and get ready for summer and get ready to go outside, we have a really fun story for all of you and for me today. We have the CEO uh, of Priority Bicycles, Dave Wiener, here with me. And uh, Dave has been a national star here in the U.S. as everyone has shifted gears and gone outside. He's got such an interesting background as a CEO of a bike company because Dave actually has a long history with Microsoft, a 10-year history with Microsoft. He's an author about Microsoft. He was the CEO of Coal Systems in UXC Eclipse, a Microsoft Dynamics partner. He's an author, as I mentioned, about Dynamics AX, a guide to Microsoft Axta. So I'm going to have to ask him about that. He knows more than I do. And uh, he has a prior history, really his passion is the bicycle industry, industry. Dave left his career in technology to pursue this passion project and start this company. And so today, Dave is the CEO of Priority Bicycles, a bicycle manufacturer of over 30,000 bicycles per year, focused on low maintenance bicycles. And previously, as I mentioned, Dave was featured on our nation, nationwide television ad about Microsoft Teams, which uh, I, always gives me a chuckle. So Dave, first, welcome and, and tell us a little bit about your role at Priority Bicycles. My role here at Priority spans the whole business. We started as a small company and we're now at about 20 employees. So we're starting to get a little bit more specialized in what we do. Uh, my role focuses a lot on product development, making sure that we have the right products at the right time. But I also oversee all of our customer support because nothing is more important than our customers. We listen really, really well, trying to make sure that every time somebody gets a bike, they're smiling on it. And also to, to pay attention to their feedback because we've learned that if we listen really well to our customers, they'll tell us exactly what to bring to market. So. I spend a lot of time in customer support, a lot of time in operations, and I, I certainly love riding our bikes. It's just a, a little bit of everything. And uh, so you'll find me building bikes, you'll find me answering calls. I, I, I love being able to be spread across the organization. It's so great to hear you, you know, as a, as a customer yourself, spending time rolling up your sleeves with your team, whether it's customer, customer support, but just keeping grounded that you are a, a business that's delivering to an end consumer. Uh, and and, and you, this wasn't um, exactly, I don't know, maybe what you imagined uh, you would do uh, in your own career journey. I, I've loved reading about you because you really have this technology background. Talk a little bit about your journey to the CEO of this company. Yeah, you know, in some ways, this is always what I thought I would do, but but it's uh, or always what I wanted to do. So I grew up working in bike shops and love bikes, love to work on bikes, love to upgrade bikes, fix bikes, and certainly love to ride bikes. Uh, in, in university, I got to work for a bicycle software company, and that's where I started to learn technology. Now, we did uh, a database for bike shops that we sent out every month on 12 floppy disks. <laughs> so I'll, I'll date myself with that one uh, and, you know, learned a lot uh, about DOS and, and Fortran. And, and that's where I really got started in technology and, and loved, loved it just as much as I love bikes, because similar to bikes, when there's a problem, you can fix it with technology and you can sort through the code and find where the bugs are. And, and I find it very gratifying to solve a problem with technology or with my hands using tools. Um, so my journey from bikes got me to software and then from software and, and bikes, I started working with a, a major bike manufacturer doing their Microsoft Xacta, uh, which is now Microsoft Dynamics. I decided at some point that maybe consulting in Dynamics was a better career path than bikes. Uh, and it was, and I got to become CEO of a, a large implementer. We had, uh, the, our, our specialty was doing dynamics for retail organizations. And I got to learn from so many great retail and wholesale and manufacturing companies, how they worked. And I got to help them implement Microsoft Dynamics to make their businesses more efficient. Uh, and then eventually, one day I realized I wanted to get back to my roots of, of bikes and started Priority uh, just seven years ago in 2014. 
Such a great story. And, um, you know, the, the image in my mind of you sort of sending out the, the floppy disks and, and how you took that journey of working in a bike shop to the technology world, I think, so inspirational. What would you uh, sort of say to yourself, <laughs> the Dave Wiener of 20 years ago, about, about this journey? Well, uh, you know, it, it's all about the relationships, the people you meet and every business encounter that you have. Um, I've been so lucky. I got to start in the bike industry, go to technology, go back to the bike industry. And now in the bike industry, I'm working with so many people that I worked with in the technology industry. So I feel like I've been able to recreate my career or, or at least pivot my career in between these two interest, industries that in many ways have a lot to do with one another, but certainly certainly don't from the outside. And the ability to do that for my career has just been to make amazing relationships, to go into every business encounter with integrity and purpose, to keep treating everybody like their family. I'm a hugger. You know, I, I wish we could hug. <laughs> I, I, to me, it's, um, it, I would tell myself to just keep doing the best you can, work hard, burn no bridges. And, and to me, that's really what's helped me because after being in the Microsoft side for, for 10 plus years, I got to go back to bikes. And there were so many people that were happy to help me start my company when I was nobody. And then I had all these friends in technology that helped me integrate so that we could become a fast growing company with the technology needed, the platform needed to become a competitor in a really crowded market space. Wow. I mean, there's there's a lot of lessons there. I'm a hugger too, by the way. And I can tell just, you know, based on everything I've heard about you in the Microsoft ecosystem, that relationships are important to you and you've made your good fortune happen um, through through the intersection of these things you're passionate about. How did you, as you as you thought about starting Priority Bicycles, which is a big jump, um, how, tell us about the motivation to do that. Um, I was going through what, uh, you, you're a parent, so I'm sure we've all been there. Uh, I had a one-year-old. I was trying, you know, we were talking about having a second child. I was traveling, as I like to say, eight days a week. And I was really feeling like my life needs to change. And I wasn't sure how I could keep running a software company and not being on the road all the time with offices all over the country and even all over the world. I, I needed to be in those. Microsoft Teams didn't exist yet. I needed to be in those places, right? I needed to be with my team because I am a, a, a very much a, a people per. I, I, I need to work with people. I, I thrive off the group. So I was always traveling and I knew something had to change. And at the same time, I knew if it wasn't going to be software, what else did I know? I knew bikes. <laughs> and, and after spending all this time in the retail sector, I realized that I had this idea around low maintenance bikes. And if I could prove the idea worked, wouldn't that be fun? And uh, that's where Kickstarter came into play. We raised $550,000 in our first 30 days, which was a great way to kickstart a business. And we were off to the races, you know, from there, we've never looked back. Well, as someone who has, is a parent, but has never started her own company, um, I just, I so admire, because I too love the intersection of retail and technology. Yeah. I so admire the courage to do what you did. And um, especially, you know, with one child at home and another one on the way, um, it's it's an incredible jump or, uh, or a ride, I guess. Uh, tell us a little bit about you know, some highlights and, and then maybe some lowlights that you've learned along the way. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'll never forget the day before my our Kickstarter launch. My wife said, uh, we're, we're pregnant. And, you know, some of that, too, is just the motivation you need because you realize failure's not an option. It's not an option. And failure's never been an option. Right. We just to, to me and what I've learned in, in working with so many retailers is you just got to keep at it and you got to pivot. And so when you talk about like the highlights and lowlights, I mean, uh, highlights are, are absolutely starting the company in the first 30 days, getting $550,000. But 
we did a second Kickstarter right behind that for a kid's bike because I, I of course needed my kids to be on, on our bikes. And, and that was a low light because the product didn't do well. And learning how to quickly pivot and pull your customers that didn't buy it and understand why they didn't buy it and then recreate that product to the way that your customers want it. Uh, and, and it's been a big lesson in, in at priority for me is just to ask, our, it, it, it's so fantastic to have customers because they tell you everything they want. And so if we sit in a room and we think about what should the next bike be, we're going to be wrong. We sit, we always look through a different lens, whereas if we just ask our customers, they tell us everything. And so low lights to me uh, have been, for example, that kid's bike. When we put our name on something and put it out there and it doesn't sell well, I take that totally personally. Uh, you know, low lights to me have been, if we're, if we're late a week on a bike, I'm crushed. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't sleep at night if I know that we told somebody their bike was going to ship on Friday and it didn't. Totally keeps me up. Uh, it's to me those are the issues. But you know we've been able to mitigate those and figure out how to use our systems to better forecast and how to better inventory plan and and certainly we found really good ways to log the feedback from our customers uh, because it comes in every day and make sure that we're continuing to develop innovative products that service a void in the market. Yeah, what, what, it's so interesting to hear you talk. I think one of the things that I always loved about retail in my gap days, I, I ran consumer research uh, for their family of brands is, as you said, like the consumer will tell you. <laughs> You know, and, 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 and the burden and, 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 and in a way, when you put these products out, it, it is, it, although it might not always feel like that to the end consumer, it's such a personal expression of what, of what you believe they want. And the question is, are you going to then take the feedback when you win and you lose and, 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 and redeploy it? When people say, don't take it personally, I mean, retailers <laughs> and product companies by nature, of course, you're going to take it personally. <laughs> it's like a labor of love, you, you know, but whether That's you're... Right retailer or a small one so 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 tell us a little bit about the tech your technology background and how you think that has both helped you and maybe where it might have hindered you in in your uh, transition um, or maybe it wasn't as much of a transition but certainly a different industry by 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 categorization yeah well you know being consumer direct and we started the company as consumer direct I love bike shops. I grew up working in bike shops. They hold such an important part in my heart. But I knew that starting a company in 2014, we had to be able to ship direct to the consumer. And we do work through a lot of bike shops for final assembly, for tune-ups, that, that, that type of thing. But we knew we had to have a direct relationship with our customer because that's the way the world was moving. And that direct relationship with the customer is, by the way, why we get so much better feedback than brands that go through stores because they don't have... They don't have that interaction directly with their customer. Having that extra layer there adds a lot of overhead and it adds a lot of cost. So technology has really enabled us to do it. And you, when I was selling Microsoft Dynamics, I was always trying to sell somebody an end-to-end -end system that automated all your transactions. And I always told people to buy a system to grow into. It's very expensive to replace current processes. So you need to look at the future. You need to buy a system for where you want to be. And, and simply, I took my own advice there. So when we started Priority, in our first year, we had Microsoft Dynamics, which is, was way too big of a system for a company of our size. But at the same time, we knew that we weren't going to be that size for long. And you need something to grow into. So you got to have the technology. You have to invest early. You have to train your people. Uh, you have to have the people that can use the technology, right? Uh, it, it, it's really hard to train people on new processes. And the software brings so many great best practices with it that having the software and the best practices in place and training our staff on the right way to do it as we bring people in has been a huge, huge uh, help for us. Somewhere where technology's hindered us, um, I, I'm sure there's somewhere, uh, I'm sure there's some software we bought too early because uh, we, we, we do tend to go a little early, but I, I 
don't know that I have. You know, I think everything we've done technology wise has been really successful for us because we are a dot com company. And it's really, you know, who the dot com players are that sell everything. And to compete with them in technology is in many ways impossible. But in other ways, there are a lot of good small business tools that if we just use them the way they were designed, it's not expensive to deploy. And it does give us a competitive advantage over some of the companies that are more mature in our industry that don't have as good a technology as we do. Absolutely. And I think, you know, the consumer, they want choices, right? And they don't want to buy from everything from one place. And so... Companies like yours that are product first, but see the technology as the enabler, and, and and as you said, sort of build not just for the current state, but where but where the vision is, um, are those that we're certainly seeing, um, you know, coming out, especially the last fifteen months, stronger. Will you share a little bit? I mean, I actually have to admit, I got a new bike, like like so many people um, during uh, the pandemic, and I've been out with my kids more than I ever have. Tell us a little bit about what the last you know, 15 months have been like for you and your team. Yeah, uh, it's, it's been wild. It's been very gratifying and humbling because we had this idea of a low maintenance bike that was shipped to your home ready to ride in minutes. And that idea was doing very well pre-pandemic. But when the pandemic hit, people didn't want to go into stores to buy something or to tune it. They wanted to buy it online. And they wanted to have bikes because they wanted to be out riding with their family. It was one of the best social distancing activities that we could do with family and with friends. It's one of the ways we were able to see friends during the pandemic was to go for a bike ride together. So the pandemic has, uh, you know, helps business. Certainly we would trade all that business success for world health. Uh, it's been, a, it, you know, it's been a roller coaster for all of us. But again, having technology has really helped us because we were quickly able to, using Microsoft Teams, have our team all go home. Uh, in Man we're based in Manhattan. And so a lot of our team left town. They left to move back in with parents that they hadn't lived with for 20 years, right? Uh, living, sleeping in basements that, that they hadn't seen in a long time. And so uh, the pandemic has helped us move more product. It's helped us deliver on our mission of low maintenance bikes and getting them out there. But it's also really enabled us to use a lot of the technology we implement like Teams. And, you know, the, the Microsoft commercial that you've seen, we do virtual showroom visits. That was such a fun project to launch where we've always thought that we could give a local bike shop experience to people all over the world. But we were doing it over phone and email. And now we do it over teams and it's so much cooler. It's so much more fun. And, you know, now we're getting to a point where we're taking our masks off. But six months ago, it was a great way to sell a bike or talk to somebody about their riding or help somebody who needed a service question answered. So pandemic has been great for business. It has allowed us to play with all these cool technology toys that we had and has really proven that having the systems in place were really an uh, important part of us being able to seize the opportunity of getting more bikes out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I in watching you, and I, I couldn't agree more that, um, you know, obviously none of us would want to have, have had the fit last 15 months happen, but the way in which you pivoted your business and actually opened and created this transparency with, you know, virtual assembly and 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 your warehouse, I mean, it, it, it's in, it's 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 it must have been empowering for your team to not sort of retrench, but actually go closer and push further into, into the consumer. Yeah. We're all such social beings that for our team that started to come back into the office, being able to do these virtual visits with customers was therapeutic for us. It was therapeutic for customers. Uh, as so many customers said, like, wow, I haven't talked to somebody about buying a product live in so long. It's so true. I mean, even I'll tell you, even just sitting here, like the number of customers that I meet with that are that ask me now about, you know, the frames behind me. I mean, yeah. it, it's so different than what we ever imagined. But there is a way if you're a relationship based person that you create those connections and just in a different way. Um, and, and in some ways, technology replaces it in some ways, of course, it never will. Um, yeah. 
We're, so, we, we were really lucky. You know, RSM has played a huge role in building out our technology footprint here. Uh, we were we built out so much of the technology footprint in December before the pandemic with RSM, and the timing couldn't have been better. Well, you've used the word luck a couple times, Dave. I have a future. It, it's it's more. I have a future. I have a feeling it's more than luck. Um, I think it's tenacity and passion and staying grounded in in your consumer and your team. Uh, so, I appreciate the humility, but I think it's certainly more than luck. Um, and and so, I guess as we sort of wrap up, tell us a little bit about the future and and where, what your vision is of you know where where are you going to take you and your team going to take Priority Bicycles. The, the future is looking very bright for us and for the bicycle industry. And I think more people on bikes is just good for the world. As we all come out of COVID and we start getting back to work and getting back to socializing, more people are going to choose to travel by bike. So low maintenance bikes that we've been making are going to become more important in the commuting segment. In addition, uh, when we started with low maintenance bikes, we thought they were for recreational riders. We've come to realize that there's all sorts of segments that need low maintenance bikes. We have a bike packing bike that's doing really, really well. And bike packing is multi-day adventure off-road. And of course, if you're going multi-day adventure off-road with your bike, which has been soaring during the pandemic, you need a low maintenance bike. You need something that's not going to break down when you're hundreds of miles in the wilderness. Similarly, our fleet business is doing incredibly well. So, and, and we see huge growth. We sell to hotels. Hotels need low maintenance bikes. They need bikes that aren't going to break down on the guests. They need bikes that are maintenance and repair guys that don't have to touch. And corporate campuses. So we're selling more and more bikes to corporate campuses because they want their employees to get between buildings on bikes instead of using vans. And a lot of those companies are now saying, take a bike home. Take one of our corporate bikes, ride at home. We don't want to bust people back and forth when you could get exercise and breathe fresh air. And we all have learned so much about germs that, uh, and how, how, uh, how everything travels, right? So uh, bikes are going to continue to grow. We think low maintenance bikes are going to continue to grow. And we're going to keep adding segments uh, to our, our portfolio products. Wow. How fun. I mean, I, I can tell you my family and I are going out on a bike trip this summer. We're, we're super excited. Uh, I got a chance for my first vacation away this weekend. We went to the wine country and of course we, we rode bikes instead of uh, driving, which wouldn't be a good idea. So um, I, I, as you were talking, I just can imagine um, both, you know, the kind of the utility value, but also the emotional, the well-being value, um, whether it's campuses or hotels, as you said. I like to say that every day you start on a bike can't be a bad day. And so no matter how short or long your commute is, if you ride a bike there, it gives you the brain space that you really can think you can get into your office refreshed. It gets the endorphins pumping really important to spend the, that, that commute in on a bike instead of in traffic in a car listening to the radio or having or worse on a phone call when you're on your bike it's you in the road and it, it's a great way to start a day absolutely absolutely well david or dave i guess i should say now i i just wanted to say a huge thank you to you for joining us and taking time out of you know your busy day uh, to join me and all of us who are listening in to Taking Stock Live. It's just been a privilege to learn from you, to partner with you, and to see how you're leveraging technology to build this incredible company. So I hope you'll continue to keep the conversation going with me. And, um, and you know, I hope to see you actually yeah. maybe on a bike, either in Manhattan or in San Francisco, or maybe somewhere completely new and different. All right. I look forward to that bike ride. Really, the pleasure is all mine. I'm so excited to talk about some of the technology we're using. I'm grateful for the support from Microsoft in, in terms of these amazing solutions that enable us to grow. Uh, happy to chat anytime. And it's really an honor being here. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of you for tuning in to another episode of Taking Stock Live. That was so fun. And I hope you'll continue to join the conversation and hear from these incredible thought leaders and always share feedback and comments to me. Thank you. Thank you.